Il nostro primo um, speaker è Jerry McGovern, che abbiamo alla nostra destra. Um, I will switch to English just for a short, short introduction. Jerry helps organization to reduce data waste by designing simpler, lighter, more environmentally friendly websites and apps. He developed Top Tasks, a research method that identifies what really matters and gets rid of what doesn't. He has uh, written uh, pretty many books, <laughs> I think eight, if I'm not wrong. Um, the last is Worldwide Waste, How Digital is Killing the Planet and What to Do About It. I think there was a copy downstairs, if you've seen it during lunch or the coffee break. Uh, very interesting one. So today uh, he will speak about hardware and materials in the, di in the digital age. Um, he will have about 15 minutes and then we will leave a little bit of time for questions if there are any questions. I try to be pretty strict. I'm sure that there would be no need to be here. <laughs> Please. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, so the Great Wall of China, they say we can now build a Great Wall of China every year with electronic waste. We're producing about 50 million uh, tons. It's probably more, but it's somewhere in that uh, region and it's growing. It's doubling every 10 or 15 years. So definitely e-waste is a significant and growing issue. Mount Everest is, has a mass of about 175 billion tons of material. And in 1970, we were mining about 20 billion, 20 to 25 billion tons of material a year, most of that uh, being uh, actually waste. By 2020, that had grown to 100 billion tons of material. And in order to get to the so-called green transition, we will need to be mining 170 billion tons of material every year and essentially creating 170 billion tons of waste. So e-waste is, is definitely a significant problem, but basically for every gram of e-waste we create, we create 2,000 grams of mining waste. And while we could create one Great Wall of China uh, from basically the e-waste we could create, we could create 2,000 Great Walls of China from the mining waste that we create. And you can't survive on a planet the size of the Earth by mining a Mount Everest every year. Uh, and this is what we are told is the green transition. It's really the greed transition. Um, the linear, uh, uh, everyone's talking about the circular economy and the need uh, to have a circular economy, but in human society, it seems we talk most about what we do least. Uh, the circular economy has is like one of the Siberian tigers. It's becoming more and more scarce, and like everything else, biodiversity, it's going to become extinct uh, pretty soon. And even if it was possible, there's no such thing as 100% circularity. There's always loss in systems, so you cannot create a, a truly circular uh, environment when it comes to materials. And when the economy is so great and so massive and so growing, even circular economies will only delay the crash, maybe for another 50 or 100 years. So in 2018, uh, linear uh, about 91%, so 9% of materials uh, circulating. 2020 uh, dropping by 2023, it's 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 about seven seven point two percent. So it's getting less uh, circular every year, even though we talk about it more and more and more. Humans are wonderful at that. Uh, the waste economy for electronics. If you take in what comes into an electronics world, whether it's computers or uh, uh, TVs or you know cars are 50% uh, electronics today, but let's say 100% comes in. Uh, the UN estimate we recycle about officially recycle about 17% of it, but probably probably even less. So what is recycled 
Um, we get back somewhere in the region. It's very difficult to get accurate because there's so many materials in these products. But we get we get back reusable materials of about 30 percent. So the 18 percent that we recycle, we don't get 100 percent back because if you've got 70 materials in a phone, you can't recycle all of them. Uh, getting one back will destroy three or four other materials in the recycling process. So essentially, our circular economy for electronics is about 5%, and that's optimistic uh, in the process. So the digital uh, ecosystem is the most linear ecosystem of all uh, systems for a whole range of reasons, complex materials, etc. cetera, uh, use, use of uh, all sorts of compression to get multiple materials into smaller spaces, which means it's very difficult to recycle. So biomass, which is sustainability, again, sustainability there's nothing sustainable about digital digital is you know the last thing i i checked there's no potatoes in your smartphone there's no you know there's no wheat there's no there's there's stuff that is not sustainable all you can do is delay uh, uh the the amount of time that will run out that particular material so what was uh, sustainable the biomass economy the stuff that we grew uh, the flowers the birds and the bees we're we're uh, sustainable to some degree as as human beings on this planet well back in 1900 we were using uh, in our economy about 80 percent of sustainable materials by 2005 that had dropped to 32 percent and by 2050 it'll, it'll be about 20 percent and the other 80 percent is chemicals and metals and stuff that is not sustainable no matter how much we say it is it's not uh, but we're wonderful saying it is anyway so um the cloud of course is on the ground it's in these big computer servers uh that 70 million of them uh storing about 10 zettabytes of data at the moment uh, of all the data we create on the yearly basis we only store about 10 percent of it and 10 percent of it is a natural and enor enormous amount so each one of these is about one to two ton of co2 to make uh, probably five to ten tons of mining waste in the process and hundreds of thousands of litres of wastewater uh, in the process. And, and we destroy about 20 million a, a year. Many of them are actually physically destroyed for security and uh, other reasons uh, in the process. So we, so we physically destroy perfectly working computers because we're human. Uh, we do that sort of thing. Uh, data growth is is driving uh, so much of, of the negativity in the world. Uh, in 2010, about two zettabytes. One zettabyte to print out a zettabyte of data would require 20 trillion trees. Uh, so there's only three and a half trillion trees left on the planet. Uh, and that's just for one zettabyte. So by 2020, 64 zettabytes. This is every year. It's not a, this is every, by 2025. Uh, by 2035, it's estimated uh, about uh, two, 2,000, a little over 2,000 zettabytes of data. So based on current technology, and people say, oh, but the technology is getting better. No, it's not. Moore's law is coming to an end. Uh, the, the price, the era of cheap data, like the era of cheap aisle is, o is over in the process. So let's say we get a little bit more uh, efficient. Uh, we, we still have a big problem. So it's 28% annual growth rate, which is absolutely scary. And 90% of what we produce is crap. 90% of the data we produce, we will never visit again. It's just been stored. So data centers are essentially uh, data dumps. So 2035, let's imagine that in a bit, that we roughly on the same uh, technological landscape. Well, that's 1.5 billion servers. That's one server for every four, five people uh, on the planet. Uh, each one, one to two ton to make, and we'd be destroying about 428 uh, million servers. And people say, oh, it's, it's not going to be as bad as that. Well, we might be destroying 100 million servers. Well, who, who cares when the planet is being destroyed anyway, whether it's 100 or 400 million servers? The general direction uh, is not good. Water in the materials. Soon, data will be drinking more water than people are. 
uh, more water will be required on a daily basis to cool and look after data than an ordinary human being will actually uh, drink uh, in the process. So just lo looking at a short, deep dive into uh, our wonderful world of materials. A smartphone has about 70 materials somewhere in the region. Uh, to make our smartphones really colorful, uh, these are rare earth materials. The yellows are, are, are uh, the rare arts that are required to make our smartphones shine a little bit more, the screens look more uh, colorful. But six uh, rare art materials. There, there's actually nothing rare about rare art materials here. They're all over the world. It's just they're not in significant accumulations. Uh, so there's only a few places where they accumulate. But to get rare arts is extraordinarily difficult because they tend to be associated uh, with uh, radiative and radioactive materials. So the waste process uh, in rare arts, I think it's about 2,000 tons of toxic waste for one ton of rare earth uh, materials. But that's really important because otherwise we wouldn't have shiny screens. And it's really important to have shiny screens because uh, other what would we do? How would we live if our screens weren't shiny and bright uh, in, in the process? So 16 or so rare earths. And vibrating, getting our phones to vibrate, that's a profoundly important thing as well. We need about five of these materials uh, to get our phones to actually vibrate. So one of the ways, and there is thinking and there is movement, that if we have any hope to survive, we have to design in a vastly different, materially simpler way. We used to design smartphones with 10 materials only about 25 years ago. Now we're designing smartphones with 70 materials. We don't need 70 materials. We can make perfectly working smartphones uh, with a lot less materials, with a much greater chance of recyclability and reuse of those materials because the more complexity you bring into material design, and particularly when you create allies, uh, which are combinations of materials, it's almost impossible to recycle those materials. So we have deliberately made these decisions that's why we're getting linear. It's not, it's not an accident. It's a deliberate decision, of course, underpinned by planned obsolescence. Because if you destroy materials, you maximize profit in the short term. If you create waste, waste is one of the best models of profit, profit maximization. So the waste is not an accident. Waste is the, the design process of the modern world. Uh, and as Peter said, the, the big tech, 20 companies control the planet. You know, we never had that before. We've allowed 20 companies to control uh, the planet. Just a tiny little journey into copper, one of these so-called transitions uh, metals. The only thing we're transitioning from, by the way, is a livable planet to an unlivable one. You know, that's the transition from an environment that's, uh, that is actually uh, achievable to an environment that is not sustainable to our life. There are, there are no other transitions coming on because we're, we're using more coal than we've ever used. We're using more oil than we've ever used and all the other gas in, in 20 years. We'll have all these electric things and we'll have coal and we'll have oil and because the growth rate is so fast in our modern economy. But copper... Uh, materials are not disappearing like, a, oh, we had copper today and it's gone tomorrow. It's not what's going to happen. They're gradually disappearing and dissipating uh, into uh, the, the atmosphere, so to speak. In 1900, about 4% ore grade quality. So for every uh, ton of uh, soil that you dug up, about 4% of it was uh, copper. So basically by 2050, it had dropped to about 2%. So basically we find all the best, the richest seams, and then we have to find more difficult ones. And to get those more difficult ones, we need more engineering and nearly always more chemicals uh, in the process. By 2005, it was 7% uh, ore grade quality by 27, 6%. And it's estimated by 2050, about a tree, a point three of 1% or great quality. So what does that uh, mean? Well, more mining is more waste. So back in 1900, <coughs> to get one ton of copper, uh, you would create 25 tons of uh, waste. By 2023, to get one ton of copper, you're creating 190 tons of waste. And that waste is a lot more damaging than it was in 1900 as well, because you've been using a lot more chemicals, dangerous chemicals uh, in, in the actual process. So in billions of tons, and the acceleration is scary. 
extraordinary acceleration uh, in the process. So 1900, let's say we start a, a baseline from 1900 and we say we're at, we're at zero uh, waste for copper. It took us 108 years to create a Mount Everest of copper waste. So Mount Everest of copper waste is 175 billion tons, right? And we created two of them uh, from 2008 to 20. So it took us 108 years to get to one Mount Everest. It took us basically 14 years to get to two. And here's where we're going uh, in the process. Uh, so I don't know what to say other than, uh, you know, hope is not enough. Um, uh, by 2050, every year we'd be creating about a half amount Mount Everest just of copper waste. Thank you. Well, perfectly on time. There is time for one question, if you have one. Um, I do have one. Uh, you don't give a, a lot of hope. <laughs> but um, I was wondering why listening. Um, what about um, if we had to pay, because we, we, we produce so much crap, right? 90% of crap, that's a lot. So what about if we had to pay for the stuff that we want to keep in a storage, but really pay for like, n not like um, $15 a year, but um, <laughs> if the price of storaging was much higher considering also the environmental impact. Absolutely, I mean, I think we, if we're going to constrain data growth, we're going to have to have a data tax. So we're going to have a, a data tax, I mean, free when it's free the environment pays because there's nothing free you know so but the whole big tech model is addiction and like an addict they sell us stuff and they say oh free have a you know a free shot a free so they get us to five gigabytes and then then they tip us over uh, and that's when they make their money so the whole the whole big tech model is based on the destruction of the planet it's based on overconsumption. i mean uh the big tech used to be a technology industry. Now it's an advertising industry. Uh, its whole model is overconsumption. So, and overconsumption is the problem. So the only hope is degrowth. The only hope is degrowth. But that, but people don't want uh, to hear about that because uh, we're all addicts and we're we're stuck and we we need the next injection, you know. But uh, you know, the next injection is going to, one of those injections is going to kill us. And there's no room for hope, but there is room for action. I, I believe in Samuel Beckett, what he said, I can't go on, I won't go on, I'll go on. 